So can you prove a, hypo <clears throat> a hypothesis is true? I bet that most of you would say, yeah, of course you can. That's the whole point of the scientific method. No? Why else do you do an experiment? But I want to challenge that idea. So first, let's look at a case study. This species of tiger moth emits a series of clicks similar to the bats that eat them. Let's look at this video. So I want you to hear the clicks of the bat. That's the first thing you'll hear. It's a form of sonar called echolocation. The bat emits clicks that bounce off the prey, in this case the moth. The bat can tell where the moth is in space and how it's moving. It uses sound because it can't see in the dark. When the bat gets near the moth, labeled B. trigona, the moth emits some clicks and that bat misses the moth. In other words, the moth does not hit it. Let's watch the video. are blocking the sonar of the bats. In other words, the moths are preventing being eaten. One alternative is that the moths are warning the bats that they taste bad. Often the organisms that taste bad will have certain colors and warn predators. Think about the black and yellow stripe of a bee. Because these organisms are active in the dark, warning is transmitted through sound rather than visually. There are more hypotheses that were tested, but I'm simplifying here. Let's clean up these hypotheses. The first states that if moths are blocking sonar, naive bats or bats that have never encountered this species of moth could startle and stop their attack. If they see another moth, they should attack it like the first. Think about seeing an apple on a table and you're hungry. You reach for it, the apple disappears, so you stop reaching for it. And if you see another apple, you'll still try and eat it in the future. The second hypothesis states that if moths have a warning effect, the naive bats, or bats that have encountered the species of moth, should keep attacking, but not attacking the other moths. Back to our apple analogy. You see the apple, reach for it, take a bite. It's bitter and it makes you sick. If you see another apple, you're not going to eat it, remembering how the first apple made you feel. Now we can test our hypothesis. On to the experiment. In an experiment, we alter one variable. We silence some moths. This is the treatment group. We alter the moth's ability to emit clicks. The control group is left as is. The moths can still click. Now, we can tie the moths down, release the bats, and see what happens. The results Bats caught moths in the treatment group. This was the group that was silent. But bats stopped their attack on the control group or the one that still emitted clicks. But if they encountered another moth of this species, they would attack it. So how do you interpret these results? Pause and see if you can figure it out first and then resume the video after you come up with your answer. So the conclusions reached by the researchers were that the, that the moths obstruct the bat's sonar, allowing them to escape being eaten. The alternative hypothesis of having a warning to bats. So back to our original question. Did we prove the hypothesis was true? Not really. We can't know what the bat experienced. We can't get into the head of the bat. So all we did was disprove the reasonable alternative hypotheses. When you use the scientific method, you disprove all reasonable alternatives. The hypothesis left standing has the most evidence supporting it, so we accept it. However, our conclusions can change when we get new evidence. That's how science moves forward. The hypothesis that the hypothesis wasn't a guess. It was based on prior knowledge and research. It was a prediction of what would happen, a 
reasonable explanation of the observed phenomenon. 